The Hornet is equipped with an inertial navigation system allowing the aircraft to track its position very accurately. The navigation system weighs heavily in the timely and successful completion of your missions. It provides the information needed for locating key fixed points called waypoints. Waypoints mark navigation points important to your mission and are stored in the mission computer. The navigation system also provides a moving map displaying aircraft and waypoint information overlaid on the terrain. The navigation system coupled to the autopilot lessens the need for constant control input by the pilot. The autopilot has several modes allowing you to choose the mode that best suits your needs at the time. Most navigation information is displayed on the Horizontal Situation Display, or HSD, located directly below the upfront control. The navigation display is the default display for the HSD. It can be invoked at any time by pressing the N key. Change your view to Cockpit Lookdown using the 2 key. The aircraft symbol in a fixed position centered in the display represents your aircraft. The compass rose rotates around you. The lubber line set at the top of the compass indicates your current heading. The display scale is located in the upper left corner. Cycle the scale with subsequent presses of the N key. Bearing, distance, and time to go to the selected waypoint is displayed in the upper right corner. Time of day measured in Zulu time is in the lower left corner. The lower right readout is your elapsed time, or the time you have been engaged in the present mission. Located under the left wing of your aircraft symbol is the true airspeed readout. Under the right wing is your readout for ground speed. The selected waypoint is displayed vertically down the right side of the HSD. We'll cover waypoints along with take hand bearings in the next topic. Located to the inside of the compass rose is the waypoint bearing pointer, the bearing pointer tail, and the waypoint situation symbol. Located just outside the compass rows is the take hand bearing pointer with its opposing pointer tail. The take hand situation symbol is inside the compass rows. Like waypoints, take hands provide a fixed point for purposes of navigation. Waypoints are a fixed point in space, such as a target location or an airfield. Displayed on the HUD in the lower right corner is your selected waypoint preceded by the distance to it. Go to the cockpit lookdown mode. The HSD displays your selected waypoint vertically down the right side. The waypoint for your home base is always zero. Locate the waypoint bearing pointer and its opposing pointer tail inside the compass rows. Press the N key to increase the scale if necessary. Aligned with the pointer and the tail lies the waypoint situation symbol. Cycle through the waypoints by using the W key. These three symbols always align. Select a waypoint and change your heading so that the waypoint bearing pointer rests just below the lubber line. You are now on the correct heading to the selected waypoint. Go back to the cockpit view. Within the heading tape you'll see a small vertical bar called the waypoint steering cue. It should have moved to a position above the caret indicating a heading toward the selected waypoint. Take hand provides you with a relative bearing and distance to a take hand station. We'll use take hand as a navigation point to airfields. Cycle take hand selections using the T key. The current take hand selection replaces the waypoint readout in the HUD, giving you the distance to a take hand followed by a three letter code. This code is known as the station identifier. Take hand selection is also provided in the upfront control. Looking down to the HSD, the take hand bearing pointer and the opposing pointer tail are located just outside the compass rows. The take hand situation symbol aligns with the pointers. Navigating to a take hand is similar in procedure to navigating to waypoints. Selected waypoints and take hands can be coupled to the autopilot. This and other autopilot modes are discussed in the next topic. Autopilot can be used for everything from basic navigation to pinpoint bombing runs. The autopilot features five modes of operation and is controlled using the upfront control located just below the HUD. The upfront control indicates autopilot is on and four of five autopilot modes are displayed in the option fields along the right side of the display. Shift A selects the autopilot mode. 
a colon will be displayed in front of the active mode. The A key then engages the autopilot. Basic autopilot is the default autopilot mode and is not listed in the option fields to the right of the upfront control. If no colon appears beside an option, basic autopilot is selected. Basic autopilot will level the wings if your aircraft is not rolled more than five degrees at the time of engagement. If your aircraft is rolled more than five degrees, the basic autopilot will maintain the current roll attitude that existed when it was engaged. The heading select option, or HSEL, will capture the current command heading, or selected waypoint, and fly the aircraft directly towards it. Barometric altitude hold, or BALT, will capture the current pressure altitude which existed at the time of engagement and hold the current heading. Radar altitude hold, or RALT, will capture the radar altitude that existed at the time of engagement and capture the current heading. Couple, or CPL, will navigate to the currently selected TACAN, or, if used in conjunction with the ILS, in a valid localizer area, auto land the aircraft. The autopilot state is indicated in the HUD in one of the right advisory slots. Again, autopilot mode is cycled with Shift A and engaged with A. Basic autopilot is not listed as an option. Therefore, if the autopilot is on and no colon is seen in the upfront control option fields, you are in basic autopilot mode. The moving map displayed on the HSD allows you to see your aircraft's heading overlaid on a graphic representation of the terrain. It also provides a visual aid in locating airfield orientation in relation to your current heading. Go to the cockpit lookdown view and engage the moving map with the M key. The navigation symbology is unchanged, but there are some changes in the way it operates. Scale the map with subsequent depressions of the M key. Current scale is located in the upper right corner of the display. Bearing, distance, and time to go to the selected waypoint are displayed in the upper right corner. Selected waypoint is shown vertically down the right side of the HSD. The map display is centered on your aircraft symbol. North is up, so like any map, the compass points are stationary. Your aircraft's heading is indicated by the rotating aircraft symbol and lever line. Hold your aircraft heading. Your aircraft symbol remains centered in the HSD and the map moves beneath you. The waypoint bearing pointer and its opposing tail indicate the direction of the selected waypoint. Adjust your heading so the aircraft symbol and lever line align towards the waypoint bearing pointer. This will put you on course to your selected waypoint. Follow the same procedure to navigate to a selected TACAN, lining up with the TACAN bearing pointer. When you begin a mission, note your heading from the base to the target. If your aircraft becomes damaged, you can fly the opposite or reciprocal heading back to friendly territory. The moving map will help you find your base, getting you close enough to fly in visually. The remainder of your training will introduce you to one of the most advanced and deadly weapon systems in the world. Features of the radar system allow you to focus on your main combat requirements, detect the target, steer the aircraft, and release, launch, or shoot. We'll cover the primary and secondary sensors and their associated displays. You'll train in air-to-ground attack techniques and tactics, finishing up with the principles of air-to-air -air combat and its associated weapons. The main sensor employed by the Hornet is the AN-APG-65 multimode radar. Radar information is displayed on the right DDI. The radar has two primary modes of operation, air-to-air -air and air-to-ground. When the radar is first activated with the R key, it will be in air-to-air -air mode. Radar performs a scan of a given size or volume of sky in front of the aircraft. Because it takes time to scan a volume of a given size, different modes of operation are available to help optimize the process for certain tactical situations. In addition to the size of a scan volume, the direction the entire volume points relative to the nose of your aircraft may also be changed. There are two scan volume orientations. The first is known as a stabilized scan volume. This volume is positioned relative to the horizon and will remain fixed on the horizon despite the aircraft's pitch. The other mode is called a destabilized scan volume and is relative to your aircraft's waterline. In other words, if you point your nose at the ground, this is where the center of the scan volume will point as well.
You will use air-to-air -air radar in searching for other airborne targets. Air-to-air -air radar has four sub-modes as well as options for scan volume adjustment and auto acquisition. The current sub-mode selected is indicated in the upper left of the radar display on the right DDI. Regardless of the mode, radar is affected by terrain masking and other limitations. For example, if you and your target are on opposite sides of a mountain, your radars would be unable to locate each other until you've cleared the obstruction. Use the R key to turn the radar on and also to toggle between air-to-air -to -air and air-to-ground radar modes. Use the Q key to cycle through the available sub-modes. Each mode will initialize set to its maximum range. To change the range displayed, use Tab and Shift Tab. Although the window you are seeing the radar picture through may have an adjustable scale, the radar will always display everything it sees out to its maximum range. For example, if you're viewing an aircraft that's five miles away, but the radar scale is set to 80 miles, the aircraft will appear squashed up to the front of the display. Air-to-air submodes available are velocity search, range while search, track while scan, and single target track. Velocity search is the ideal choice for long range search out to 80 nautical miles. Range while search is most useful for general purpose long range scanning with a high update rate. Track while scan provides more information on targets than range while search but is limited to a smaller scanning area. Single target track or STT actually locks the radar dish onto a single target and tries to keep it there. This provides highly accurate and fast radar updates which are required to employ weapons such as an air-to-air -air cannon. The air-to-air -air radar display located in the right DDI is a top-down view of the airspace in front of the Hornet. The radar display is marked with azimuth grid lines across the top and bottom and range grid lines on the left and right. In the case of velocity search, the vertical grid lines represent velocity since velocity search cannot determine range. The bottom of the scale represents zero and the position of your aircraft. The vertical line moving back and forth over the display represents antenna position as it scans the sky. This is called the B-sweep line. The number in the upper right corner is the current radar range. Cycle the radar range by using tab. The caret located on the left, which moves vertically, is the antenna elevation symbol and is used to represent the angular position of the antenna on a scan-to-scan -scan basis. The readout in the bottom left corner is your true airspeed, and the opposite corner is your barometric altitude. Contacts are displayed as either an upside-down U or a solid rectangle, depending on your radar mode. Also depending on the mode, targets may either be cycled directly or selected with the backslash key. Targets may also be selected by depressing the shift key while using the arrow keys to move a small cursor called the target designator cursor, or TDC, around the radar display. When the TDC is over the target, the backslash key can be used to directly designate that target. Once you designate a target, the antenna elevation caret will display the differential altitude beside it. This is the difference in altitude between your aircraft and the target. On the opposite side, when tracking a target, the range caret will appear along with the closing velocity. In the upper right corner of the display is the target designator cursor, or TDC. The TDC is used to manually acquire a designated target. Using the shift and arrow keys, position the TDC on a contact. Pressing the backslash key designates that target. Pressing Q will now activate single target track mode if you are in track wall scan. If a weapon is selected, it will be shown in the upper right corner. Once you have designated a target, indicated by the launch and steering symbol on the contact, launch range markers are displayed for your selected weapon. Depending on the selected weapon, an allowable steering error circle, or ASE, and steering dot are presented on the radar. Maneuver to position the target below the top range marker and in the ASE. You'll receive a shoot cue. Pull the trigger or press return or the enter key. The 7 key tracks the missile view or press 5 to view the target and the incoming missile. As previously mentioned, air-to-air -air master mode is divided into several sub-modes. Sub-modes provide functionality designed for different tactical situations. Cycle through the available sub-modes with the Q key. Velocity search is used for long-range detection. Its detection algorithms rely on velocity 
and the contact must be closing on your aircraft to be detected. Aircraft flying away or perpendicular to you will either not be detected or return a very small velocity. Detection ranges can be as far as 80 nautical miles, however the current range to the target cannot be determined. The scale for a velocity search is 0 to 800 knots in range versus azimuth format. Contacts cannot be cycled in velocity search since VS will drop into single target track upon designation of a contact. The most effective way to pick out a specific contact in VS is to use the TDC cursor. Move the TDC over the contact with the shifted arrow keys and designate the target with the backslash key. Range well search is a very versatile mode providing both long range detection and limited aspect capability. Range well search can detect contacts out to 40 miles. Because of a wider scan volume than velocity search or track well scan, range well search has the ability to detect targets in a larger volume of air, including those at lower altitudes than your own aircraft. As with velocity search, contacts cannot be cycled in range well search since range well search will drop into single target track upon designation of a contact. Use the TDC cursor to select and designate the contact. Track well scan has better close in detection than either velocity search or range well search as well as greater look down capability. Look down is the ability of the radar to scan below the aircraft's waterline. This advantage makes track well scan the mode of choice for employing weapons. Use track well scan to employ your weapons after taking in the big picture with velocity search or range well search. Because of the speed at which it must perform a complete scan, track well scan is limited by the volume of sky it can cover. It cannot keep tabs on as large an area as range well search because it must provide more timely and detailed information on each contact. The single target track or STT mode provides accurate tracking of a single target. Single target track can only be entered via one of the previous three modes. The radar no longer scans but actually locks on or tracks a designated target. Once a contact has been selected and track while scanned, press Q to activate the single target track lock. You can manually designate a target for single tracking from another mode by using the TDC cursor. A TDC designation can be performed by moving the TDC over the contact and pressing the backslash key. Single target track then displays the track target, velocity vector, range to target, missile range envelopes, and depending on the weapon currently selected, the allowable steering error circle and steering dot. Auto acquisition, or AACQ, is a modifier for all submodes. When in one of the radar submodes, activate AACQ by pressing Shift Q. AACQ will automatically designate the closest contact to you, and depending on the mode, either lock it up in single target track, or in the case of track while scan, designate it as a launch and steering target. Air combat maneuvering, or ACM, radar modes automatically acquire and track the first detected target within range. Activate your radar using the R key. Shift R then cycles through the various ACM modes available. When you first enter ACM, you are in track wall scan mode. ACM radar modes use special antenna scan patterns for short range target detection and auto acquisition. Pressing Shift R will cycle you through the ACM modes of vertical acquisition, or VACQ, wide acquisition, WACQ, boresight, BST, and gun acquisition, GACQ. When in one of these auto acquisition modes, as soon as the radar acquires a designated target, it jumps into single target track mode, locking the radar onto the target. If radar contact is lost, the radar returns to the track while scan ACM mode that was last in use. Air to ground radar modes are useful to find the target, navigate to it, and identify it for your attack run. Activate the radar using the R key. Pressing R again cycles to the air-to-ground radar mode. The Q key then cycles you through air-to-ground radar sub-modes. In the air-to-ground modes, the range and azimuth grid fans out from your aircraft's position at the bottom of the display. Your current mode is displayed in the upper left corner. Bearing is in the top middle and weapon selection is to the top right. Your barometric altitude is in the right corner and your true airspeed is in the lower left. The antenna elevation carrot is on the left side of the display. 
Again, pressing Q cycles air to ground submodes. Map is basically a navigation mode displaying general outlines of large geographically significant areas. It is very useful in tracking along coastlines or rivers. Map mode paints a picture of ground features. If your waypoints are not functioning, map may provide the extra navigation needed to get back to home in one piece. In addition, nav can plot spots on the ground which may be designated with the TBC and handed off to weapons. EXP-1 provides high resolution air to ground mapping enabling detection of tactical targets and detailed mapping. GMT is very useful for finding and attacking moving vehicles. Similar to sea surface search, it displays contacts as synthetically generated rectangles. To pick out targets, this mode looks for anything with velocity on or near the ground. If the target stops moving, the radar contact will disappear. C or SEA mode targets are displayed as small blocks of raster video. The backslash key cycles targets. You may also use the TDC to designate targets. There is no identification of a selected target as in air-to-air -air modes. Use the target view 5 key to visually identify the target. This mode is ideal for finding very small targets, however, it's up to the pilot to select from among what can literally be dozens of small contacts. C is calibrated to find moving vessels at sea and filter out extraneous material such as waves. The RWR, or radar warning receiver, provides two methods of showing the pilot a picture of potentially hostile radar threats. These are not necessarily aircraft, but anything which has a radar pointed at your aircraft. The radar warning receiver azimuth display is located in the standby instruments group. The radar warning receiver provides two components for viewing hostile radar emissions, the azimuth display and the HUD repeater. The azimuth display provides a top-down view of the space around your Hornet in 360 degrees. The center of the display represents your aircraft. Anything appearing on the display at 12 o'clock would be directly in front of you. Contacts at the 6 o'clock would be directly behind you. Moving out from the center, your location, the bands represent a contact's relative strength. Strength in this case means an increased threat. Distant signals received by the radar warning receiver are displayed in the outer or non-lethal band and do not represent an immediate threat to you. Closer to you is the middle band or the lethal band. Contacts in the inner band or critical band represent an immediate threat and demand quick responsive action. The radar warning receiver displays the possible type of contacts by using the following symbols. A represents AAA. C represents a continuous wave type radar. I represents an airborne interceptor, such as fighters or helicopters. And an S represents ground-based radar associated with SAM site type search and track radar. Radar warning receiver information is also repeated on the HUD. Contacts are displayed using the same symbols as the azimuth display. HUD display of contacts, just as in the azimuth display, is 360 degrees top down. Contacts directly in front of you are displayed at the top of the HUD, and contacts behind you are at the bottom of the HUD. Signal strength is indicated by one of three sized vectors or lines trailing from the identifying symbol towards the center of the HUD. The length of the vectors indicates strength and correspond to the threat bands in the azimuth display. A short trailing vector means the contact strength indicates it is probably non-lethal. A vector of middle length indicates it is probably tracking you and is therefore a lethal threat. A contact in the critical range will have the longest vector and probably means it's got a lock on you and is preparing to fire a missile. The radar warning receiver does not display nor calculate altitude or range only azimuth and strength. There is no way to tell if a contact is above or below you. The radar warning receiver filters out friendly contacts by using IFF and therefore only shows hostile or possibly hostile contacts. A contact that is unknown is considered a bogey until we check it with our IFF system. IFF stands for Identification Friend or Foe. The system sends out a code looking for a specific reply from the contact. If the wrong reply is given, or no reply at all, the aircraft is presumed unfriendly. In most cases, you can assume a lack of IFF reply to be a hostile indication, unless the mission has briefed you differently. 
To interrogate an aircraft, you must first make radar contact. Select the target using the backslash key. Then press I to interrogate the aircraft. If you hear a tone, then the reply was correct and the contact can be considered friendly. Assume the aircraft to be hostile if a tone is not heard.